Hello everyone, this is Reza Vaizi and I'm going to show you how to conduct association rules analysis using RapidMinder in this short tutorial. Hope you enjoy it. I have already imported the data set for the association rules analysis and looked for any inconsistencies, outliers or problems with data initially. However, there are, some, there are still some data preparation steps that we need to take. Let's take a look at data. I just went ahead and dragged and dropped it into my process window and I'm going to run this very basic model to take a look at my data. Here's the data. Okay, here, here we have the receipt number with the minimum of one and the maximum in hundred thousands. We have more than hundred thousands of records and the receipt number or receipt ID refers to the ID of these receipts. And then in the rest, we have product categories that are being sold in the supermarket. We have desserts, meats, juices, paper goods, and so on until produce. And you can see all these uh, data has been imported into RapidMiner as integer. All these var variables are identified as integer at the time of importing. And it's 0 and 1. Remember what I said about the specific format for the association rules analysis. It should be in the 0, 1 or 2 or false uh, in the binary format. So we have our variables in the binary format and as you can see the receipt ID is treated as a regular attribute. If you look at here we have no special attribute, we have 12 regular attributes. That means that Rapid Miner is going to treat receipt ID the same as it treats desserts, meats, and juices. So the first thing we need to do, we need to turn receipt ID into a special attribute and give it a role. What do you think that role should be? Perhaps you guessed right, the role should be ID. So how we can give that uh, variable a role? There are two ways. You can assign it a role at the time of importing your data set into RapidMiner or if you fail to do that at that time as I did, you can go ahead and use an operator called setRole. So I'm going to use setRole and in setRole I'm going to parameters choose receipt ID and the target role is going to be ID. Let's run this model and see what will happen. Now as you can see the receipt ID color has changed to light blue and if you go to statistics you can see that uh, uh, it has changed the color there and you can see a little ID up there and if you look at here on the bottom we have one special attribute and 11 regular attribute. Now it's time to go ahead and start using the next operator. So just by looking at it, we have, but just by looking at data, we have identified our receipt ID as ID. So RapidMiner knows that it should exclude it from the analysis, uh, but keep it there for the results. And then we have the rest of our variables in zero and one format. But remember, but you see the type is integer. The type is not binomial. In some applications, you specifically have to uh, assign the type binomial uh, to these variables in order for the algorithm to work. Some, uh, some other applications, they do not require you to do that as long as all your data is in 0 and 1, they can work with your data. Now let's go ahead and see what kind of application Rapid Miner is. So the next step is to generate frequent item sets or generate item sets with specific support percentage. We want to see how many frequent item sets or items uh, do we have in our data set. The operator that does that for you is called fpgross which uses fpgross algorithm to create these frequent item sets. Let me go ahead and drag and drop this fpgross on the line and you will see that we have a little error here. You see this red quarter circle here if you go ahead and hover above it, you can see the error. There is one error. Regular attributes must be of type binomial. So right now we are uh, they are of type integer. Again, there are two approaches to fix this. 
One is to fix it at the time of importing your data set into RapidMiner, meaning that at the time of importing, you will go ahead and change the data types from integer to binomial. If you fail to do that or if you forgot to do that, don't worry, you still can go ahead and change the data type to binomial using an operator called, think about it, what should be in the name of, uh, or in the name or description of that operator? Binomial. You start looking for binomial and you can see we have num numerical to binomial operator. That's a type converter. We'll go ahead and drag and drop it here. And here is numerical to binomial, and we are converting all attributes. So this all attributes all is all regular attributes. It will not touch the ID attribute. Now let's go ahead and select FP gross one more time. Here we have the one find minimum number of item sets checked. When this uh, box is checked, the algorithm will ignore the minimum support. It tries to generate the, or it tries to meet the goal of minimum number of item sets, which is 100. You need to go ahead and uncheck this box so you can work with the minimum support. So right now minimum support is 95%. What does it mean? Think about it a little bit. Basically it means that it will only show items or items sets with 95% support at, and that means only items that appeared in your data set 95% of the time will be displayed next. Remember the support was the frequency of item or the frequency of item set divided by the all total possibilities which total possibilities is equal to the number of uh, records in your data set. So if you have some items or item sets that appeared in 95% of your receipts, it will be picked up by this FP gross algorithm and it will be displayed next. Do you think that 95% is too much or not? How many item or item sets do you think will be generated with this minimum support? Let's go ahead and take a look. So here you don't see any frequent item set. What do you think is that? It's because here we are passing through the example set while you had to connect the frequency. I'm going to connect, connect the frequency. I can leave the example set uh, here. You will get a view of your data set or I can go ahead and eliminate it. I'll go ahead and delete it. Now here you will get the FP graphs and the frequent item set with the minimum support of 95%. Let's go ahead and run it one more time. There is no item set. It means that in your data set there are no items or item sets uh, with the minimum support level of 95%. 95% is a lot. You know, if you have an item set that uh, in a context of supermarket that exists in 95% of the receipts or cards, or cards uh, that's your golden item, you know. Uh, you can actually have a store only selling that item. It's that popular. So let's go ahead and uh, decrease the minimum support. Let's go ahead and decrease it to 50%. So right now it will only show those items or item sets that their minimum support level is 50%. They occur 50% of the time in our data set. Do you think it, there will be items that occur this many times, 50% of the times? Let's go ahead and check it. There's still no items that found. There are no items or item sets that hit this criteria. Let's go ahead and change it to 20%. 20% seems more reasonable. Now it generated few items. We know we now know that in 33% or almost 34% of our receipts, uh, we have beer, wine, and spritz. In another 34%, a little bit less than beer, wine, and spritz, we have snack foods. So 34% of our customers bought beer, wine, and spritz, and snack foods produce 32 or 33% frozen foods. So basically what this tells you is that 33% or 34% of your 
receipts contain BR1 spread 34%, 33.8 to be exact contain the snack food and 24%, 21 and 21.4% contain dairy products. But these are all items. We did not generate any item set. Remember, the item set is the uh, is we when we have more than one item included in our frequency table. Let's go ahead and lower this uh, uh, support. Let's go ahead and lower the support uh, even more. Let's change it to ten percent and run the model one more time. Now it created some item sets. At nineteen percent, we have beer, one spritz, and snack food so 19 percent of the transactions contain these two items together you can go ahead through the list and at the bottom at 15.5 percent we have beer wine spreads snack foods and frozen foods together here using the fp gross we we've got a frequency table and the support percentage for any of these item sets or items now let's go ahead and create the actual rules so what would be the operator for that one It is called create association rules. Let's go ahead and create association rules. Create association rules takes in the frequent item set uh, list and it will generate rules based on that list. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the parameters. We are looking at the confidence criterion and the minimum confidence we set it at point eight. It means that we are only interested in rules that their minimum confidence is 80%. Let's go ahead and see if this one generates any rules for us. Yes, we have two rules. We know that the snack food, the snack food and frozen food together, when they're bought together, they lead to beer one and spread. Um, we are 82% confident that this will happen. We can also take a look at left and as well above one. So your observation is not due to mere chance. This is good. We can also, you can look at this one. Beer one spreads and frozen food are leading to snack food, 83%. So the support for these two are 15%. So 15% of all your transactions contain these three items. Uh, snack food, frozen food, and beer one spread. And you are 82% sure that People who are going to buy snack food and frozen food together, they are going to buy beer and wine, beer wine spreads as well. You see the support is the same for both of these rules because the items involved in these rules are the same. But their confidence is different because in confidence we have premises and conclusion. And the confidence is not reciprocal like the support is. Now let's go back and change the minimum support to maybe 50% and see what will happen. You get more rules here. So you have some rules here that beer one spreads are leading to frozen food. So 80% of your 18% uh, of your transaction contain beer one spreads and frozen food together. And you are 54% confident, almost 55% confident that buying beer one spritz will lead to buying frozen food. You can take a look at the left measures, they are all above one, uh, which indicates uh, the rules are good. Combining the support, confidence, and lift, you have to decide whether the rule is good and how much you can capitalize on the rule and how much you can rely on that rule. Now that the rules are generated, you are done with the analysis part, but not done with the so what part. You are done with the modeling part, but not done with the so what part. This is the most important part. You have to look at these rules and then think about actionable business suggestion or maybe marketing strategies or marketing campaign tactics that you can use to increase your sales, to drive more revenue. So this is the most important part. This is the most important question you need to ask. And your answer to these questions will determine how good your efforts of data mining has been. We will discuss more of these uh, practical or actionable business solutions in class when we'll 
we'll go over the discussion on the association rules analysis.